You're welcome back to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. So good morning, Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Good morning, my sister. Thank you for being here. Um, let's good begin morning. with... Have a lovely weekend. Yes, we did. Thank you. We hope you did so too. Let's begin with the Daily Independent newspaper. The headline reads, Naira depreciation, high interest rates, store debt servicing. Nigeria accidentally discovered 206 uh, TCF gas reserve. That's according to Silver. And Ambra 2021 Guba poll, APC primary election never held. That's according to party spokesman. NDIC set to pay depositors of 14 closed banks. Fresh threats from Niger Delta Avengers are necessary. That's according to the presidency. Why fan jettison sitter services migrated to Ressa. Herbert Wigwe is 2021 African Banker of the Year. Southern Middle Belt leaders ask World Bank IMF to stop loans to Nigeria, says it's country with questionable sovereignty. Governor Matawale joins APC. That's according to uh, the presidential aide. Federal government averts crisis in power sector, intervenes in labor, Ibadan disco dispute. All right, moving on to the Daily Sun uh, newspapers. Uh, we can see uh, the big one there says, Buhari begs Niger Delta Avengers, says threat of bombing unnecessary. ESN, Uzodima threatens to bomb Imo Forest. And also, Basenjo raises uh, the alarm over Nigeria's rising population. Federal government to tax Google, Twitter, and others, says the vice president. And also 40 oil firms in possession of dormant refinery licenses. We can also see on the Daily Sun Constitution Review, speaker routes for state police. Uh, Anambra Gubernatorial, no APC primary election held on Saturday, says Ngige. And Nasu threatens nationwide strike, accuses federal government of failing to implement agreement. Those are the big ones we can see on the Daily Sun. This morning. Let's go to the Punch newspaper. Patrol landing cost hit 203 Naira. Subsidy rises to 5.58 billion Naira daily. The writers reads April landing cost 216 Naira. Devaluation rising crude price fueling price increase. Rowane says rising subsidy payments reduces funds for infrastructure development. Also, Auditor General queries MPA's 44 billion naira unremitted tax, 88 billion naira admin spending. INEC projects 20 million new voters as CVR begins today. Federal government widens revenue base, plans taxes for global tech giants. APC power blocks begin battle. Buhari's defunct party eyes chairmanship. Also in the Punch newspaper this morning, 20 million naira ransom demand for our monarch too high. That's got into the family of Ekiti King. A Tukul group wants ex-VP PDP's consensus presidential candidate. Protest continues as Ubad claims APC tickets for Anambra governorship poll. Last month, officials absconded with my bleeding wife, stole 150,000 naira. That's according to a businessman. Protest in Kwara community as gunmen kill pregnant women, woman, kidnap husband. Okiwe and Akintoye others say Nigeria now a disputed project, stop fresh loans. And we see a, a picture here on the Punch uh, newspaper. You know, people here are crowded uh, close to uh, the bank of, you know, this body of water here. And the, the headline reads, or the caption reads, a crowd of... Uh, jetty as authorities order a fresh lockdown over rising COVID-19 cases in Bangladesh on Sunday. And those are the stories in the Punch newspaper. All right. Now, the Guardian newspaper's uh, last uh, firms to produce from neighboring countries over new gas prices and others. Uba Ozibo to challenge Soludo in Anambra uh, gubernatorial polls. Also, I've responded to demands and threats I've responded to demands, threats, pointless, Buhari tells Niger Delta militants. Eminent Nigerians won World Bank and IMF and others against granting loans to Nigeria. We'll tax profits made by global giants in Nigeria, says Oshimbaju. And also hearing resumes at Supreme Court on $15 billion judgment against Nigeria and others.
All right, I think we're going to stop there. Good morning, Mr. Kolawale. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, my brother. All right, Hope so... Uh, a great weekend. Yes, we did. Thanks for joining us. Let's get straight to it. Which of the stories would you like to start from? Well, uh, as usual, um, most of the stories that you find in the papers this morning are all stories that are not very cheery at all. Mm -hmm. It paints a very gloom, very gloom picture. It's uh, these are stories of a nation uh, at war with it, um, itself. But let me first and foremost start with um, the gas uh, story. Some country, I mean, from um, company that now produce gas are planning to move to some other West African uh, countries where prices or cost of production are lower. Uh, this wouldn't be the first time we're having this kind of experience. You know, in the past, companies like Dunlop and what have you, and some pharmaceutical companies, relocated, relocated to Ghana because of high cost of production in Nigeria. We also recollect that Twitter, rather than put it uh, with African and African uh, office in Nigeria, they decided to put it in a tiny country like uh, Ghana. Uh, all these things are happening at the time in which Nigeria's unemployment rate is said to be 33%, uh, the second largest in the world. So the implication is that uh, foods are being taken from Nigeria and put on other people's table. And when such a thing happens, we can expect more poverty, more unemployment, or more social crisis within the Nigerian uh, policy. The second story I would like to deal with has to do with the primary election of the two foremost political parties in the country, both the APC and the PDP. Uh, before now, Professor Patutomi had said that um, the APC in particular, most of the political parties that we have in Nigeria are court groups and not parties in the real sense of the word. Because there is no transparency in the way and manner they conduct their operations. When they give you uh, a notice that party families and congresses are going to be held in a particular place, you can be sure it will not be held there. It will be held in some other places. And in the process, they will disenfranchise most of their members and rob some of most of the candidates that they have collected money from to purchase their uh, forms uh, without refunding such money. So when a party or when parties are uh, themselves not settled and they are this divisive, how can they find solutions to Nigeria's problem? Because if a man or a family cannot resolve the little domestic problem that he has in his own household. How could he be a mediator for a dispute resolution in other people's families? This is another conundrum that the Nigerian is facing. Then you have the petroleum land cost, it's 232 uh, billion, and subsidies rise to 558. This is another self inflicted uh, injury. If all our refineries are working and we don't require to import petroleum products, they wouldn't be paying too much for this uh, product. But all effort to get the refinery to work has uh, yielded no positive uh, fruits. And to further combat the problem, a government that is likely to lament that will leave in 2023 has awarded contract for the turnaround maintenance running to billions of naira. Uh, of uh, the Moribon Nigerian refinery. And this um, turnaround maintenance is not likely to be completed until, I mean, until the next uh, six years. Why would the government be awarding a contract that it will not be on ground to survive and which will not be completed until another six years? How do you get people that will take this contract to account for the money? When those who gave them the contract are never likely to be in power. This is another conundrum, very peculiar to Nigeria. 
as a, a nation. So many people have also been given uh, refinery licenses to produce uh, fuel products uh, in Nigeria. And uh, it is said that, I mean, but how many of them have actually embarked on the production process, except the Gangote refinery? The truth of the matter is that they take these licenses not because they are interested in producing any, running any refinery. They take it with the intent that uh, they might get somebody who will buy those licenses from them uh, in dollar rates, and then they make a billion or millions of dollars uh, overnight. You will remember that Dangote collected a license to run the GSM or telecommunication company, and he didn't do it. He was given ordinary paper by the overseas regime. He sold the paper and made billions of uh, dollars overnight. All right. This is what the Nigerian elite do to us as a people. So all those who got the licenses to also run refinery, except Dangote and the Boa group, the Abdusamad group. All right, Mr. Mr. No Kolawale. Mr. Kolawale. Um, yes, please. Um, I, Mr. Kolawale, can you hear me? I'm hearing you. Yes. See, about the situation in the Niger Delta, um, I don't know yes. if you read the statements from the group. They say they're launching a new operation called Operation Humble and that they were going to begin to target political parts, political leaders who basically side with the government to their detriment and, of course, attack oil installations in the country because the Niger Delta is, is you know, underdeveloped. Um, I want you to... Um, bringing your perspective on this issue and the reaction to, by the president, uh, as we've seen in other papers, including the Daily Sun, it says Buhari begs Niger Delta Avengers, says threats of bombing unnecessary. What, uh, I am not surprised that uh, the agitators in the Niger Delta area are also coming up to say, look, they want to resume hostilities in those places. Uh, the reason is not far fetched. Most of the promises that were made to the Niger Delta people have not been fulfilled. For example, there was a promise that uh, most of uh, the communities in which there has been oil spillage will be cleaned up, especially Ogoni land. They will collect that uh, Kensal Uwa and several of his other colleagues, about eight of them, pay the supreme sacrifice, sacrifice their lives. For me, saying that the Nigerian nation should stop polluting their environment. If we as a nation have been proactive, we will in the first instance not allow any pollution to take place in the Niger Delta. If we are a nation of proactive people, the gas flaring that we are doing in the Niger Delta heats up the environment and makes living conditions very deplorable uh, for the people of those places will not have happened. If we have built very good schools and massive, massive housing projects and good roads for the people of the Niger Delta, we probably would not be having that kind of agitation in those places and all that. Injustice will consequentially lead to violence and all manners of agitation. Nigerian nation required to do justice to the people of the Niger Delta. Right. The begging from uh, the presidency, for me, is neither here nor there. There's a deficit trust already between the Nigerian people and their leadership. And the reason is because when the leaders tell you uh, they are going to this direction, you can be sure it is another direction that they are going. So all those begging will not gel with the people of the Niger Delta. And if you now say you are able begging the Niger Delta militants and all that, why can't you also beg and uh, with the airport people? Because the grievances of the IPO people and that of the Niger Delta are similar. Mm. The basis of all those agitations is the injustices that are inherent in the system. That you take resources from a particular section of the country and use it to develop some other sections. So, uh, what is good for the goose should also be good for the Ganda. All right. The Mi Nigerian Mi government Mi 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 both the Niger Delta people and the airport people for peace to reign in okay, Nigeria. Okay, so basically you're saying the government is being biased in how it's handling the agitations from the uh, Niger Delta region and the southeast. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. All you right. and I look at the clinical precision, which is the so-called IRUT, the special forces and the army, 
have been dealing with the high poor people and killing innocent uh, Igbo children and Igbo uh, youth. Why haven't they? Why haven't they mobilized the army, their special forces, and all that mm. to the Niger Delta as well? They will not do that because oil is thicker than blood. Mm. They oh. need the oil to be able to sustain themselves in power. Or I'm so because Wale. of that reason that uh, and they will not want to use Lejama in the Niger Delta. Oh, well. Um, the agitations on the Niger Delta haven't started yet, and uh, I don't think it's uh, necessary yet for the army to be sent uh, anywhere uh, to the Niger Delta. But thank you very much. I would have to wrap up here uh, so we can move on to other things. Uh, thank you for your Monday morning time and for speaking with us this morning. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Are we done? Yeah, well, we, we'll have to wrap up here now, Mr. Kolawoli. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into history and, uh, of course, sharing with you things that happened on this day, the 28th of June, many years ago. Stay with us. <laughs>